I do not claim to be a theologian. <laughs> I met one one time and didn't like him, so I I don't claim to be one. I am. <laughs> and the only real <laughs> good Bible students I know of are those that don't know it yet. But I'm going to talk tonight on a subject about which I know what I'm talking about. About which I know what I'm talking about. And it's something up with which I will not put. But uh, I... Uh, <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to, I don't know good English, but I know when I don't use good English. I don't know how to correct it, but I know I'm in trouble. And, uh, but I, <laughs> tonight, I'm on, I'm on probably some ground at which I'm as near <laughs> an expert as uh, can be. An expert's any old spurt away from home. But I, uh, I am uh, as near uh, as I as I can be. I am uh, an expert on this subject. Now I know what I mean. You know what I'm saying I know what I'm talking about tonight. You're not talking now. You're not listening to a novice on this subject. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Now you you look you listen to a man who hasn't had a vacation since 1966. You listen to a man has not had one single day off work since 1966. Now, I'm 56 years old. I dare any 30-year-old man in this room to keep up with me. I dare you. I mean, I, I don't mean I can whip you, though I could. But that's not the subject of this message tonight. Will Rogers said, I never met a man I didn't like. I never met a man I couldn't lick. But anyway, I I don't care how deep their voices are. But uh, anyway, I am I am I know I know what I know what I'm talking about. I um, take last week for example. Last Monday, uh, Sunday, I preached here, spoke in Sunday school class, preached in the service. Uh, then I I counsel with probably seventy-five to a hundred people during the day. I spoke that night, I had question and answer time that night, and then took off to Pennsylvania the next day and tried to straighten up that mess in Pennsylvania. And, uh, but I, uh, then I, I preached there on Monday night, I preached there on Tuesday morning, I preached there on Tuesday night, I flew back, got up 4, 4.45 Wednesday morning, flew back here, spoke in the college, came back and, and worked in the office. Preached on a service on Wednesday night after having teachers' meeting and superintendents' meeting, and then Wednesday night service, and then <laughs> council with uh, <laughs> probably two dozen people after the service, and then worked on Thursday. I drove to uh, <laughs> to uh, Grand Rapids and preached on Thursday night, and then after the service, rushed quickly to O'Hare Field and caught a plane where I could fly to Texas, Corpus Christi, and bring the message at the funeral of Brother Roloff, and then immediately came back and got back in for Saturday. And then <laughs> worked Saturday and had a deacon meeting Saturday night till 2 o'clock in the morning, it seemed like. And <laughs> then uh, took my boxing gloves and hung them up in the office after deacon's meeting. And uh, then I uh, <laughs> preached on Sunday morning, taught my Sunday school class and preached. And uh, council, I guess, was 75 to 100 folks last Sunday. And then Sunday night, the question time, and then, th- then the service, and then took off for um, somewhere. Uh, Washington, uh, Pasco, Washington, preached there on fr- Monday night, <laughs> and then Tuesday morning, and then Tuesday afternoon, and then Tuesday night, and came back here, got here in time for the service on Wednesday night, and that's my life. Now, I'm saying, I know what I'm talking about. I know how to get strong. I know how to keep going. I know how to, to renew strength. And I'm going to tell you tonight, by some of you, are weak, by some of you, are not strong. I, this week, somebody said, <laughs> Brother Hyam, would you talk to a certain pastor in America? He's given up. I've been at his, by the way, I've been at his church on, I think, two or three occasions and preached for him. Fine man, dear, beloved brother, sweet, spirited brother. But he's given up, he said. <laughs> he said, he's just given up. He thinks nobody cares for him. He's just folded. <laughs> and, uh, and could you help him? I got a call this week from a fellow who said, a call, let's see, was it a call, letter? 
Uh, anyway, somebody said, <laughs> did you hear about an evangelist? Well-known evangelist. If I called his name, you'd know it. He said he's quit the ministry. He said he's, 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 uh, he's heartbroken. Something's happened in his life, and <laughs> he just he is, uh, doesn't even go to church much anymore. Not preaching revivals. Uh, and by the way, a well-known man, used of God in an, un- an unusual way, and uh, he's quit the ministry. One lady said, uh, wrote me a letter from, from out in uh, West Virginia somewhere, and said, my husband <laughs> got weary uh, of the burdens of the pastor, and he's resigned the church. He just doesn't have anything to do with it. He's tired of the burdens. He's tired of the problems. He's tired of the heartaches, and he's quit. He's just washed up. And would you talk to him? What can we do? One man said to me, I'm tired of fighting. I'm just tired of fighting. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm just tired of it. And uh, over and over again, <laughs> such thing. <laughs> So-and-so has dropped out of church completely. Now, this pastor who's given up hope, lost his spirit, and this evangelist who has quit the ministry, and <laughs> this husband who is a pastor who got weary of the burdens, and the the fellow who said, I'm tired of fighting, and the Christian that drops out of church completely, and the college student that goes back home, and the high school student that gets expelled, and the grade school student that uses bad words and becomes a, a discipline problem, all have the same problem, and that is no renewal. No renewal. Now, the word renewal means made new again. Made new Again, now no Christian, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're sitting on the platform as a staff member. I don't care if you're in the choir. I don't care if you're, on a, if you're pastor of the church, assistant pastor. I don't care who you are. You're not going to make it if you don't get renewed. You didn't get all you needed in salvation. You're going to have to renew it to make new again. And that's why the Lord said, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now, that's why the Apostle Paul said, I buffet my body daily, lest I myself should become a castaway. He said again, one place, he said in Galatians, he said, if, uh, if any man come back and preach not the, the, the doctrine of the gospel that I preached unto you, let him be accursed. He said, if an angel from heaven come back and preach any other gospel, let him be accursed. And the Apostle Paul realized it could happen to him. Paul said, if I come back and preach any other gospel, realizing he himself could become a liberal. Paul said, if I somehow were to lose my faith and become a castaway and come back and preach any other gospel other than that which you've heard, Paul said, treat me like a castaway. Let me be anathema. Now, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to realize the potential that you could be a backslider. You've got to realize that you must stay renewed all the time. You've got to. Now, none of us, none of us is exempt. And all of us have enough things to endure that we will have reasons or excuses to quit. Somebody tonight can say, I quit. I, I, I can't pay my tuition. It's due now. And I quit. Somebody said, I'm tired of working day and night. And I quit. I talked to a young lady, on, I saw a young female on the telephone for the day. She came to college with her husband. And it wasn't what she thought it'd be. I mean, she got lonesome and she, and she just took off, went back home. And I talked to her. And, uh, and and she said, I'm just tired of it. Uh, if he wants to, to quit the ministry or move where I am, I'll live with him. But I won't live with him there anymore. I won't do it. I'm tired of a college preacher's, being a college preacher's uh, wife, and I won't do it anymore. Now, I'm saying that uh, that you've got to realize that that's going to happen to you. And everybody in this room has things and adversity and problems and in things to endure that could give us we, we, what we would call a valid reason to quit. Now, you don't try to avoid the reasons to quit because they're going to be there. You don't have to avoid the reasons to turn back. They're going to be there. And what you've got to do is you've got to get renewed so you'll have strength not to quit and not to let these reasons over, overwhelm you and cause you to turn back. Ah, oh, let me tell you something, folks. Um, I, I don't know of anything that I want any more than to finish the course. I mean, finish the course. Not many do it. Most people stumble before they get the end of the way. But, but, but we must realize it could happen to us, and it will happen to us unless we are renewed. Now, this renewing must come daily. It must come every day. 
You can't get renewed every Sunday and make it all the way to the end. No way. You can't depend on me to renew your spirit. I don't care if I could. If I could, you can't come to hear me once on Sunday morning, once on Sunday night, once on Wednesday night, and get renewed. You just can't do it. Now, by the way, you need to do that, and there's nobody in this room tonight that doesn't need to be in church on Sunday morning, and church on Sunday night, and church on Wednesday night. And if there's some deacons in this church ought to come to church to get off the deacon board one or the other. I mean, it's time you decided, get in or get out. Nobody has a right to be a deacon in a church who's not faithful to the services. That's the first thing you promised when you were asked to run for deacon. You promised to be in church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night. I'm not mad at you. I'm trying to save you from someday being a shipwreck, and there's nobody here that's going to make it unless he renews himself and is renewed. Some of you young folks are going to ruin your lives, ruin the lives of your children, because you're not renewed daily. Now, it says in uh, Second Corinthians 4.16, For which cause we faint not. But, but, but though our outward man perish, that means the outward man gets tired, the outward man decays, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Did you know if you go one day without being renewed, you may fall? You'll start your trip downward, you'll start your trip backward. Did you know that a, that a, a woman could watch the soap operas one day and then watch them the next day? And watch them the next day, and in one day of weakness, you could watch that garbage and trash, and before you know it, you won't know yourself after a while. Did you know one young person in one day of not being renewed could listen to Satan's music, uh, rock music, and before you know it, you hear it again, and hear it again, and hear it again? Why? Because you didn't get renewed one day. Paul said, I buffet my body daily. I give myself a black eye every day. I beat myself in submission every day. The Apostle Paul needed that. I expect you might need it. You know what, I, what, what grieves me? <laughs> what grieves me? Every Christian ought to read the Bible and pray. I want to say this. The other day, we had a guest in our school. And that guest spoke in our high school and asked the high schoolers how many of the students had read the Bible that day or how many would read it the next day. And I, I couldn't believe that that guest told me, <laughs> the guest speaker told me, <laughs> said, said that only a small percentage of our high schoolers ever said they'd read the Bible the next day. Now, I'll tell you something, kids. Life is not all play. Life is not all basketball game. <laughs> and life is not all strength and beauty or truth and mercy. And by the way, nobody has a right to play on a basketball team at a Christian high school or the football team at a Christian high school that doesn't read that book. Nobody. Nobody. You have no right. Get, get, get in the public school with the other heathen. You have no right to read, to be on a, on a, you have no, I say, Hammond Baptist School. Hammond Baptist means Bible. Bible. You have no right to be out there and cheer as a cheerleader unless you read this Bible every day. We say, I don't like the Bible. Well, I don't like some things I do. I, do. I don't like carrot juice, but I drink it. I don't like to bathe, but I do it. I will tell you something. You have no right to represent a Christian school unless you read this book. What you say for the house? I tell you, I'm just so tired of preaching here all the time. Oh, shut up, 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 hush, 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 shut up. You have no right to say that. I'm telling you, there's some young people in this room tonight who are going to go to the devil if you don't get back in this book again. You better renew yourself every day. Now listen, a saved person that's six years old is just responsible to be a good Christian as one that's 60 years old. And a saved person 16 is just as responsible to be a good Christian as one who's 60. And a young person in school is supposed to read this Bible. And if you don't read the Bible, you're not a good Christian. I don't care how many times you go to youth soul winning. I don't care how many times uh, how many straight A's you make. And by the way, if some of you moms and dads get as concerned about your kids reading this book as they are reading the math book, you'd be some good kid. It's time some parents here got excited about their kids getting in the book. I mean, they ought to be required to read the book. Listen, if the parents are right with God, the kids wouldn't go to school and say, I haven't read the book in the last 24 hours. You get that book and you open that book <laughs> and you sit down with that kid and see he reads it. Well, you say, is there force him to do it while he's young? He won't want to do it and he gets old. Oh, shut up, shut up, shut up. Hush, hush, hush. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. I was forced to brush my teeth when I was young and I still brush my teeth once every month. I wish you would. I was forced to bathe, and I still bathe. <laughs> I was forced to eat turnip greens, and I still eat turnip greens. I'm saying if you're the right kind of mom, listen, if you're the right kind of mom and dad, 
Your child won't be able to say, I don't read my Bible. You, he'll just sit down and, well, you sit the house, I can't make him read it. Make him read it out loud to you. You say, force him? Yeah, force him. Yeah, force him. You force him to do other things, <laughs> right? Force him. You force him to feed his physical body. Now force him to feed his spiritual body. Oh, listen to me. <laughs> you don't have to be a shipwreck. But you're not going to pre- avoid it or <laughs> prevent it <laughs> unless you renew yourself every day. Now, how does one renew himself? Take your Bibles, please, and turn to Isaiah 40. Everybody, take your Bibles and turn to Isaiah chapter 40. I want you to notice verse 28. <laughs> Isaiah 40. <laughs> I'm going to teach you now how to renew yourself every day. Verse 28. Page 748, Isaiah 40, 28. Hast thou not known, <laughs> hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the, of the ends of the earth, <laughs> fainteth not? Boy, that's a good news, isn't it? I mean, uh, you know, Brother Roloff fainted. He's gone. I mean, if you had your faith in Brother Roloff as your hope for your, your spiritual strength, you're gone now. I stood before the several thousand folks and preached the sermon. <laughs> We could go last Friday. And I said, I want to serve notice to you that this book is just as true today as it was the Tuesday morning before the Lester's uh, plane went down. And I want to serve notice on you that the Word of God and the promises of God are just as valid today as they were the first part of this week. And the work of God and the power of God and the Spirit. See, I'll faint someday. Someday I'll lie state and you'll come back and look at this handsome face and say, boy, how pretty he is. And But I'll be gone. John Rice is gone. I did not. I, listen, John Rice is the best Christian I ever knew, but he wasn't God. John Rice fainted. But, but did say, I like what they said. <laughs> Hast thou known, <laughs> hast thou not heard, that the eternal, everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not? You better latch your, yourself on to him. He's the only one that does it. By the way, <laughs> I, I want you to love me. <laughs> I want you to come to hear me preach. But I want to say tonight that you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. If you depend on me alone for your spiritual strength, you're not going to do it. You're going to have to walk with God yourself. You're going to have to get in the book yourself. you got to pray yourself. Because God, everlasting God, not, neither is weary. I like that. God doesn't even get tired. I get tired. You never look at God and say, God, your eyes look bloodshot. Neither they are. You never look at God and say, God, God, I notice you're making them. You're breathing sort of heavy. But take care of yourself. We sure need you. Boy, I've heard that many a time in the last few weeks, few days. Tonight, have, I, I never have had so many folks praying for my help. Now, uh, Brother Dr. Rice is gone. <laughs> Brother Roloff is gone. Uh, we sure need you. Take care of yourself. <laughs> yeah. As they leave my office at 2 o'clock in the morning so I can get about an hour of sleep that night, take care of yourself, preacher. Take care of yourself. And uh, what I'm saying then, then <laughs> that, uh, that I'm going to faint. And I get weary. Uh, you'll, never, you'll never hear God uh, going to Mayo for a checkup. Hast thou not heard, he said, and hast thou not heard, known, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Now notice, this, this omnipotent one, this one that never gets sick, this one that never has fever, this one that never gets tired, this one that never faints, this one that never gets weary, he has the power to transfer that energy to you and to me. Look at it. Verse 29. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that, that have no night, he increaseth strength. <laughs> even the youth shall faint and be ready. He, listen, even that, uh, that young person with a strong body <laughs> and his life before him gets tired. Even the youth shall faint, and the young men shall utterly fall. But I want to show you where an old codger like me can have more strength than some of you young codgers. Now, we got young men right now, college students, going to sleep while I preach. You know why? <laughs> You're fainting. <laughs> You're fainting. <laughs> I'm staying awake, okay? Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I sit and hear somebody preach, I don't... Not me. Not me. <laughs> yeah, and you wouldn't if you were at a ball game. No, you wouldn't. No. reason you're sleepy is because you're not interested. You don't, you, you get interested. I mean, you, you listen, you, you, you listen. That's your, and the problem is, there's no excuse for a Hiles Anderson college student 
but 19, 18, 19, 20, 21, 30 years old, to fail. An old codger like me keeps on going. No use in it. No need for some of you <laughs> young fellows. And by the way, <laughs> that's why that I have more endurance than a lot of you high school football players do. And that's why it takes you 12 hours sleep a night and then about 8 hours in the day. Bill Hart used to say, Bill, you say, I can't sleep at night. I can't. I sleep pretty good in the morning, fairly good in the afternoon, but toss and tumble all night long. And, <laughs> but it's no need. Listen, there's no need. You have the mighty power, strength, energy of the God of gods. And that strength that he has is available for every one of his children. You don't have to be drowsy. <laughs> Says this, said, <laughs> even a youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall only fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Now you say, preacher, how can I get renewed every day? Wait on the Lord. <laughs> wait on the Lord. How do you wait on the Lord? You walk with Him. You talk with Him. You read His book. You meditate on His book. You live with God. And He'll give you strength. I'm not talking about spiritual strength. I'm talking about physical strength. I'm talking about get up and go. Now you say, I get up and go, then got up and went. Yeah, but you got up and went because you didn't wait upon God. You know, there's a strange uh, <laughs> belief among fundamentalists <laughs> that, that it's the job of the preacher to keep us strong. No, sir. It's the job of the preacher to remind you where you can get your strength. Now, I hope, I, I hope that, I, that, that I give you <laughs> encouragement and strength and security. But I will tell you something. It's time. That ten year old Christians and eleven year old Christians and twelve year old Christians and thirteen teenager teenage Christians and college Christians. It's time you got in the book. And you're <laughs> some of you teenagers. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen years old. Go to bed at eleven o'clock at night. And on Saturday, <laughs> you eating breakfast while I'm eating supper. Oh, mama. Let me just sleep one more hour. No need for that. No need for it. The <laughs> Bible said, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall bout up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You don't have to get tired. You don't have to get weary. There is energy. The God of gods who never tires, who never gets sick, who never gets weary, that God says, just let put your battery cable up to the, uh, your cable up to my battery, and I'll recharge yours. And then it goes on to say in verse number, <laughs> verse number one of forty-one, keep silence before me, O islands, and let the people <laughs> renew their strength. Let them come near, and notice, notice it. Then let them speak. Then, if you haven't been with God, you have no, if you haven't been with God and heard God, you have no right to talk to men. I have no right tonight to stand here before you and tell you what, 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 what the Word of God says unless I've heard God this week. Listen. Don't, don't misunderstand me. I've not yet arrived. <laughs> but I'll guarantee you, you're looking at a man talking to you tonight that's waited upon God this week. And I will not walk in this pulpit unless I've waited on God. And until I have waited on God, I have no right to speak. That's why some advantages don't make it very long. They're always giving out. Always breathing out. Never breathe in. That's why some pastors wash up. <laughs> always breathing out. Never breathe in. That's why some Sunday school teachers quit. And bus workers quit. And Christian school teachers quit. Why? Because you don't breathe in. You can't breathe out till you breathe in. And you have no right to speak for God unless God has spoken to you. And so God said, <laughs> there's strength. He said, he said, keep silence before me, O islands. And let the people <laughs> renew their strength. Guaranteed. <laughs> renewable. Now I want you to notice. The results of waiting <laughs> are not fainting. Mounting up with wings of eagles. Running and not being weary. Walking and not fainting. And then speaking. So I speak daily. I must be renewed daily. <laughs> I speak daily. I must walk with God daily. You know... The leader has to start the fire. The leader has to be the difference in a follower and a leader is the follower can catch fire and the leader starts fire. That's the difference. I know singers, <laughs> great singers. You start a fire, let them sing, then they'll make the fire 
flames bigger. I know preachers. <laughs> you put them in a great service. Let them, let, let them preach. And they'll, 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 they'll perpetuate the fire. Make it bigger. But I know preachers that can't start a fire. Somebody's got to start it. What do you say for the hell? <laughs> how, do you, how do you start it? You wait upon God. Oh, let me tell you something. This kind of fundamental Christianity that doesn't go to movies and doesn't drink and doesn't gamble and doesn't dance and doesn't smoke and doesn't listen to rock music but knows nothing about waiting on God, that will not make it. I'm against all those things and more. But you're not going to make it unless you wait on God. You're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. You're going to wash out of college. <laughs> you're going to wash out of the Sunday school class. You're going to wash out of high school. Listen, you're going to be a dropout. You're going to be a tragedy. You're going to be a statistic. You're going to be a heartbreak to your mom and dad. Let me tell you something. Every single person in this room, you better get in this book. And you better do it. Some of you young people sitting out there with the usual, <laughs> usual smirk on your face, know it all kind of. <laughs> oh, sit up there like a decent human being. Listen to me. You better listen. You better hear me. You're going to do something sorry and sad. It's going to break your heart and you tell you when, you, when you when your son or daughter finds out it one of these days, finds about it. You better hear me. <laughs> there is not a person in this room, including this speaker, that can make it tomorrow without waiting on God. Now, you set you some time every day when you live in this book. And you set you some time every day where you get on your face before God. And you set you some time every day where you renew your mind. <laughs> renew it. How? By waiting upon the Lord. And the Bible says they shall run. Now notice, it didn't say they that wait upon the Lord, if they shall run, they shall not faint. It says they shall run. Somebody said, my job is just waiting on the Lord. Others can do the running. My Bible says you wait on the Lord, you shall run. You shall run. Unless you wait, unless you, <laughs> if, you're, if you're really waiting on God, you'll run. But God has given me the ministry of prayer and that's all, and I, 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 others can win the souls. Don't pray for me. No, don't pray for me. Take me off your prayer list. I don't want you praying for me unless you run, because if you don't run, you didn't pray. The Bible said, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run. They shall run. They shall run. They shall run. They shall walk and not be weary. And they shall run, not be weary, and walk and not faint. Now, there's several things I want to say. <laughs> One is, we must renew our minds every day. Listen to me carefully. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. What does that mean? Transfigured. Same word that's used about the transfiguration of our Lord. <laughs> but be ye <you> transfigured <laughs> by the renewing. Of your mind, that you may prove what is that perfect, good, unacceptable, <laughs> and perfect will of God. You know what? Too many, too many, <laughs> too many psychologists trying to do the preacher's job these days. Too many counselors <laughs> trying to take the place of the preacher. <laughs> too many fellows writing books and <laughs> never preached a sermon on how to find the will of God. Let me tell you how to find the will of God. I'll tell you. Present your body a living sacrifice every day. <laughs> Just like the animal sacrifice was placed on the altar every day, given morning, present your body a living sacrifice, <laughs> and then don't be conformed to this world. Turn off your mash and your <laughs> and your and your all in the family, and 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 turn off your rock music, and and uh, quit dressing with your tight sweaters and wearing your short skirts, and and <laughs> ladies wearing your pants, and and uh, men wearing your long hair. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. As much different from this world as Jesus was when he was on a Mount, on a Mount Tabor, when he was in the Transfiguration. Then it said, <laughs> "If you have presented your body a living sacrifice, and if you have not been conformed to this world, but have been transformed with the renewing of your mind, then you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God." Some of you, <laughs> some of you, <laughs> high school football players are going to a college <laughs> because they have a football team, and that's carnal. I'm not saying you ought, everybody ought to go to Howells Anderson College. I'm saying nobody who's a child of God can be right with God and decide to go to a college because they got a bunch of goons button heads on a football field. That's, un, that's unspiritual. You're not a good Christian. And by the way, the Bible didn't say 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that ye present your bodies to the linebacker position. And be conformed to this NFL? <laughs> no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. You better get on your knees and get in this book and beg God to show you where to go to school. And if I ever hear of a coach in any of our schools that recommends a fella to go to a school college because of an athletic team, the coach is going or I'm going. Nobody has a right to choose a school because they shoot a basketball. I love sports as much as anybody, but a Christian supposed to be a Christian first and an athlete second. You want to know God's will? <laughs> you present your body a living sacrifice every day. And then not conform to this world, but transform to the renewing of your mind. Why? <laughs> so you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renewing your minds, what does that mean? That means think. Let me tell you how we don't God renew my mind. By the way, you have no idea what this mind of mine holds. None. <laughs> no idea. You have no idea <laughs> the decision. <laughs> Go in this mind. The responsibility of this mind. No idea. And I've got to get it renewed. And so what do I do? Every day, I stop and think. I just wait on the Lord and think <laughs> how good God is. How good God is. Schedule thinking time for a mind and <laughs> get rid of them. <laughs> Schedule time to <laughs> think how good salvation is. Now, let me tell you something. Anybody in this room that's born again <laughs> can stop and think for 15 minutes about the fact that you deserve to go to hell. And the fact that God gave His only Son when Jesus came to earth and went to Calvary. Hear me! Jesus died for you! Hear me! Jesus dipped His own soul into hell for you. You sit there and think about it 15 minutes. And you stop and think how that God's forgiven every sin of your life. Rolled away, rolled away, rolled away. Every burden of my heart rolled away. Every sin had to go neath the crimson flow. I think about it every day. And if you're saved, you can think about it every day, and you can get happy too. Yeah. <laughs> and if I stop and think, <laughs> at this minute, God is preparing a home for me in heaven. Uh, I think about that every day. And I renew my mind. I think of God's goodness. I sit down to a meal. <laughs> now, always, when I sit down to a meal, I go to Haiti for a few minutes. And realize that the leftovers I have from that meal would be the best meal most anybody in the country of Haiti would ever eat. I go to India. I <laughs> remember how that in India, little children's stomachs are bloated and mothers stand on sidewalks and watch their children bloat until they die of starvation. I think about it. I think about it. So what are you doing? Renewing my mind. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes my mind gets so tired I woke up the other day. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know where I was. I told you about the time not, not long ago. <coughs> I spent four <coughs> four straight nights. I preached in different cities and <coughs> slept in different hotels. Four straight nights. On the fourth night, I woke up during the night. <coughs> I was going to go to the washroom. And I, 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 I forgot where I was. I didn't want to turn the light on because <coughs> I never opened my eyes. When I go to the washroom, because if I open my eyes, I may not be able to go back to sleep. So, <laughs> and what good does it do, dummy, to open your eyes if it's dark and the lights are off? You tell me. Don't laugh at me because I keep my eyes shut. You open, you can't see anything. Better off to keep them shut. That's preaching, isn't it? That's the gospel if you ever heard it. And so I, <laughs> I, I, uh, I, 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 so I thought, now, where am I? Well, then, I but but I, I, I thought it was the room where I was the third night. <clears throat> and so, <laughs> but it was the fourth night. Well, the third night, you walk beside the bed and turn right to go to the washroom. But if this was the fourth night, and you're supposed to turn left to go to the washroom. So I walked down, and, <laughs> you know, I went along, thinking it was the third night. I turned right instead of left. Well, right, there was that little luggage thing that's down at the foot of the bed. You know, it's about that high. And <laughs> so... I, I turned right and fell over the luggage thing. 
In an effort to keep him falling, I grabbed him and I could, and what I did, I grabbed the cover. And so when I fell over the luggage thing, I rolled up in the cover like an enchilada would roll up the chili. Then I tried to get out of the cover and couldn't get out of it. I didn't know where I was and what night it was. He said, Preacher, what are you saying? I'm saying sometimes my mind gets so tired, so weary. He said, what do you do? I didn't do it. How do you do it? I'm thinking how good God is. You'd be amazed how, how, how thinking of the goodness of God would flush your mind out. I mean it. There are times I walk in that door right there, I just sometimes feel, I do not know if I, my old mind will make it to the sermon, but I get in my study and I think how good God is. I'm a child of God. My name is written in heaven. God is my Father. Jesus my Savior. Heaven's my home. Holy Spirit my power. Bible's my book. And you'd be amazed how that flush your mind out. God says renew your mind. All of that. We've got to renew our spirit. Ephesians 4.23 And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You know, everybody needs to have a good spirit. I mean, uh, on top side all the time. How do you do it? Mental exercises. Stop and renew your spirit. Think of the goodness of God. How good God is. And then, think, I like to think of what the Bible says about a healthy spirit. And Brother John, I sometimes will stop and think of all the funny things I can think of. So many nights when I'm tired and weary, I think about that dumb statement you made about Mr. Vogel's boy. I've laughed. And do you know that's therapeutic? That's, that's the only reason why I keep with a John on a payroll. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I woke up the other night laughing about this kale pectate he talked about the other night. Woke up <laughs> laughing about it. And I'll get to thinking. I'll get to thinking about <laughs> that little kid up there in the top of the balcony that when we had dedication in this building, they went in the airplane construction business and made an airplane out of the church bulletin and ran down on the dedication day. Mayor and the city council were all sitting down here. And I'm <laughs> dedicated. And he tossed that little old airplane off that balcony right there. And while all were trying to have a dignified dedication service, that airplane went down like that. Somebody said, what did you do? I went. I said, what did the mayor do? He went. I think about that. Did you know before I know it, my mind gets clear, my spirit gets on top side again. I get a little sometimes down. Hard to ever do. I work on myself. Listen, if you don't work on yourself, you'll get discouraged and blue. You ought to have mental exercise you go through. I think about that man. <laughs> Jumped up back there in the back one night and ran right down that aisle and started calling time out on me while I was preaching. And I said, what you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one of the policemen came. Sergeant, no, Lieutenant Miles came. <laughs> Took him back in the back, and he said, What you doing, man? He said, He's preached long enough. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you know, <laughs> do you know that there's a way you can keep your spirit on top side? You know what I'll do some time? <laughs> I'll say, Lord, remember that time? And the Lord always remembers it. And I think the Lord laughs. You say, But how? <laughs> But does the Lord have a sense of humor? If He doesn't have a sense of humor, how come He made faces like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the other day I was a little, a little weary. I do it often. <laughs> I was out in, in Maryland, <laughs> a little tired. So I started. I, I got the Lord. And the Lord and I just tell you such funny stories. I do all the storytelling. He laughs and laughs. And I said, Lord, <laughs> remember that time? When, I, when we were baptizing? And the, the man, the Spanish-speaking man, started shouting, pantalones, pantalones, pantalones. And the Lord said, I remember that. <laughs> he just chuckled. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> remember the Lord how? <laughs> how he, uh, pantalones, pantalones. And I said, what? He said, pantalones, pantalones. I said, what? Pantalones, pantalones. I looked out and I said, doesn't anybody know what he's saying? And one lady, Spanish-speaking lady, said, yeah. He said his pants just fell down. <laughs> and I tell the Lord about that. You know what the Lord usually says? The Lord usually says, and I mean this, He usually impresses me. 
I let things like that happen, son, because you don't get to play like other folks do. You don't have any time off. You don't you don't go listen to Phyllis Diller. Well, if I was going to listen to somebody, it wouldn't be that dumb looking thing. <laughs> I've seen haystacks better looking. I was down in Evansville, Indiana, preaching, <coughs> staying in the hotel. The, uh, <coughs> I was in the hotel, big hotel down there, <coughs> the executive suite or something, and <coughs> walked by the, 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 the dancing, dance hall, looked in there, and there was old Phyllis. She was performing. What a sight. Anyhow, I don't need that. I don't need Johnny Carson show. <coughs> the Lord said to me, the Lord said to me, he said, I'll give you a bunch of funny things. And the Lord comes here and gives us a bunch of funny things and, and allows us to do it. And so many times I wait on the Lord and talk to Him. <laughs> and I'll laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. And sometimes I'll cry. And sometimes I'll think how good He is. But I want to tell you something. You're looking at somebody hardly ever has what you'd call a real bad spirit. I mean that. I am... <laughs> I just, I'm pretty well on top side of it all the time. You know why? Because I take time for God. They that wait upon the Lord sing it shall renew who their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, teach me, Lord. When I was a boy, my daddy walked out on Mama and me. Mama worked in the wintertime and spring and fall and wintertime to uh, <coughs> 50 cents a day to make ends meet. I worked in the summertime while Mama was off and <coughs> made ends meet. Threw a paper out while she was working in the fall, fall, winter, and spring. I might help her. Took all the money I had and brought it home. Gave it to Mama. We kept ourselves in the poor house. And I was just a, te- I was just a boy. <laughs> and then during my teenage years, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, the same way. You know how I made it? I made it because even in those days I waited upon the Lord. I'd walk around the block. I'd walk down <laughs> Idaho. I got to Elmore. Until I got to Elmore. Up Elmore till I got to Ewing. Down Ewing till I got to Hobson. Down Hobson <laughs> until I got to Idaho. Down Idaho to Elmore. I'd walk around the block night after night, look up to the stars and say, Dear God, I love you and you're sure good to me. Do you know that numbers of the chapters of my book, Blue Denim and Lace, were outlined when I was 16 and 17 years of age walking around the street down in <laughs> Infinity Heights section of Dallas, Texas, now just a teenage lad. I rebel at this thing that kids got to play all the time. I rebel at this thing that uh, teenagers shouldn't walk with God. I'm saying I had to walk with God when I was in the army in World War II. I walked with God. You know, it's sort of pitiful. It's sort of pitiful. You see, some 25-year-old lady come into office and say, I'm just depressed all the time. Oh, well, I, I'm just about to crack up. Oh, shut up. You don't have to do that. Here's a 56-year-old man trying to help a 25-year-old lady not to get nervous. That's dumb. Here's a college student. A young man, six foot tall, 20 years old. The old guy comes there, looks at an old man, got crow's feet on top of the crow's feet. Got two hairs that he puts over his head. And you come in and say, for the house, I'm just down. No need to get down. Get up. But how do you get up? You wait on the Lord. You walk with God. You live in the book. Some of you ladies are wasting so much time going to some dumb psychologist. Would you help me get... He quits taking his pills so he can tell you how to keep him getting nervous. That's the silliest thing I ever heard of. Good night, you got a book here. Get in it. I was sitting over there in the auditorium, the old auditorium burned, Fort Burned. It's easier to sit there, Fort Burned. And I sit there, Fort Burned. <laughs> and my secretary's in the office, and I was over there reading Isaiah 9, 6, and 7. 
His name should be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. And I had a commentary there. <laughs> and it uh, <laughs> said that little term, Prince of Peace, it said what that really means is tranquilizer. And I sat over on the front seat of the old tour 22, 23 years ago. And I read that. <laughs> the name should be called Tranquilizer. And I started laughing. <laughs> and I laughed and I laughed and I laughed. And I started clapping my hands and said, he's a tranquilizer. <laughs> I don't need any boohoo pills. Ha ha pills. Hmm, pills. I don't need any of that. Wee pills. I don't need any of that. That's for you. I don't need that. You know why? Because I've been tranquilized. See, I, I got the tranquilizer. And I started clapping my hands. And <laughs> my secretary came along and said, Hey, preacher, what's wrong? What's wrong? You're screaming. What's wrong? Nothing wrong. I just been tranquilized. That's all. Yeah. Oh, how pitiful. How pitiful. Jesus said, My peace I give unto you. That is, unless you're a lady, or unless you're in a change of life, my peace I give unto you. <laughs> unless it's a recession. Oh, you crazy fool, you. You've got the peace of God right here. As close as getting on your knees and getting in this book. You know what we ought to do? I'm just piddling now. Because I didn't study much farther than this. <laughs> I'm honest. That's what you folks ought to do. <laughs> You're going to be shocked at this. I am too, because I don't know what I'm going to say. Some of you folks, <coughs> now what, you got, it's going to shock you. Some of you folks ought to turn off your Christian radio station. Turn off Christian TV. <coughs> there is such a thing. Turn it off. Turn it off. And just get the old book down. Yeah. I mean, just, just sort of burn all those magazines you get from all these preachers that you subscribe to. I'm not against them. I'm for them. I use them. The Kinman Wood. Building fire. <laughs> I'm not against them. But listen, far too many people in this room tonight spend more time in other books than you do in this book. Oh, Brother Lester used to say, Brother Jack, I won't have but one book. Just one book. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I told him, I said, Brother Lester, you ought to have two books. He said, Brother Jack, what two books do you think I ought to have? And I said, you ought to have the Bible and blue denim and lace. We got too many. <coughs> We're reading too many books. Turn on some psychology. <coughs> you know, I hate to say that, but folks will drive all the way to California. And I'm not against Brother Naramore. He's a good man. But if he ever dies, some of you folks are going to be in trouble. I mean, all the way from California. I mean, listen, take your plane ticket out there and buy a plane and go to California. <laughs> Stay two weeks out there to get peace. When I got a book here, it says, My peace I give unto you. You can save that airplane ticket and put it in the church offering. There's something awfully counterfeit about our Christianity. There's something <laughs> awfully facadish. Is that a good word? Facadish. Something awful <laughs> venerish, but awful shallow about our Christianity. Some of you ladies, your Christianity is just going from one program to the other. Won't you go from one verse to the other? Huh? How about one chapter to the other? I was preaching not long ago. <laughs> A preacher. And he said, <laughs> he came here, <laughs> he came to hear me. He said, <laughs> Dr. Hiles, he said to have you read my book on the Revelation? And I said, no. I said, have you read Brother John's book on Revelation? He said, no. Where can I get a copy? And I said, I doubt if you have one. I said, you'll find it at the end of the Bible. It just, we just... <coughs> We just play in Christianity. Not many folks in this room prayed an hour last week. Not many of you did. No. Now you're too busy to pray an hour. 
And that's why you're tired. That's why in the morning, <coughs> take a prep pill and four cups of coffee to get you going. I mean, I make it on three. But you don't have to have that. <coughs> you don't. No, you don't. No, sir. I feel sorry for you, you, you preachers that... <laughs> But before I preach, you gotta get alone 30 minutes to get my heart in a preaching mood. Just don't, just give me, just tell me when to start. I keep my heart in a preaching mood. Yeah, I don't need that. I'm saying <laughs> that the truth is we're, we're tired mentally, physically, because we do not get daily renewal. Moses, it is said, endured as seeing him who's invisible. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27. How'd Moses make it? How did he make it? When he had to go to Ferio, let my people go. How did he make it? He made it because he kept in contact with him who was invisible. How did Moses make it when he came to the Red Sea? He kept in contact with him who was invisible. How did Moses make it when he had three and a half million Jews to lead for 40 years? He made it because he kept in contact with him who was invisible. And you better keep in contact with him who is invisible. Note Titus 3, 5, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy, mercy hath He saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now, Father, not quit. When you get saved, <laughs> your soul gets saved by the washing of regeneration. But your life gets saved by the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Renewing. Constant renewal. I feel sorry for the preachers across America who have to play golf on Monday to get over the nervousness having preached on the peace of God on Sunday. If you play golf like I do, you'd have to preach on Tuesday to get over the nervousness of the golf game on Monday. I feel sorry for them. I didn't do. Oh, just worn out on Monday morning. Not me. I'm up and at them. Sure. Up and at them. Same time up every day. <coughs> I'm heading off to preach somewhere else. Got work to do. On an airplane, I work. Get to the room, I work. Get home from preaching, I work. Get up next morning, I work. Go preach, come home, I work. How do you keep your energy up? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Well, how do you keep you keep going crazy? <laughs> they that wait upon the Lord. Well, Brother Hiles, good night. I don't say you. They that wait upon. Well, Brother Hiles, I'm tired. They that wait upon. But Brother Hiles, I just get fuzzy mentally. They that wait. Upon the Lord. I don't know how I'm going any farther. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Here you are. They that read the stupid books shall renew their strength. They that go to the psychologist shall renew their strength. Huh? No, they don't either. No, sir. <clears throat> no, sir. No, sir. They that wait upon the Lord. That's it. And that's your problem. That's it. That's your problem. No no need. <laughs> Some of you guys half my age be dragging all the time. But you sit for the house. I don't get but six hours sleep a night. <laughs> oh boy, how lucky can you get? How lucky can you get? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. High school kids, you better wait upon the Lord. Oh, you say, we want to get older. Uh, you're dragging now. Yeah. <laughs> when I got that football that night and ran it back for a touchdown, tie school game, one of our deacons looked at his wife and said, look at that kid run. <laughs> How you do it, preacher? They that wait upon the Lord. For the house, I got tired blood. They that wait upon the Lord. They that get. Their B-12 shots shall renew their strength. They that go to the doctor shall renew. They that take their ginseng shall renew their strength. They that drink a lot of juice shall renew their strength. They that drink four coffee cups shall renew their strength. Huh? Huh? They that smoke their cigarettes shall renew their strength. Yeah. They that drink 
their bloody Mary shall renew their strength. Yeah. They that do their exercises shall renew their strength. Yeah. They that eat a spoon of honey with vinegar, apple cider vinegar, and hot water shall renew their strength. Huh? <laughs> How about this one? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Have you heard? Say, have you heard? I like, I like the way Isaiah put that. Have you heard? Have you heard? I got some news for you. The God, the everlasting God, He never gets, He never faints. Never gets weary, never gets tired. One day, Brother Fisk went to the hospital. St. Margaret's up there. One of our men is going to have surgery. And Brother Fisk walked in to encourage his heart. They're getting ready for surgery. <clears throat> getting the knife all sharpened up. You know, <laughs> and getting all ready. And Brother Fisk walked in to encourage the fellow's heart before he had surgery. And Brother Fisk took one look at him. And down he went. I mean, fainted. Gone. Here's a guy with cancer. Nobody had taken care of him. They had to revive the preacher who had fainted. No need for that. No need for that. They that wait upon the Lord. Luke 18.1 Men ought always to pray and not to what? Not to faint. No need to faint. No need to faint. Just wait upon the Lord. Our Father, I wish the folks would learn this. I wish they'd get it. This is, this is one of the great problems of the Christians today. I wonder how many doctor bills could be avoided if folks would just heed what's been preached here tonight. I just wonder. I just wonder. 